When's the last time you watched a whole movie without going on your phone? I love movies, and at this point, I can't seem to make it through one without doing something else at the same time. And it's not hard to understand why. With internet and streaming content exploding, people like me have a million options to choose from, and are more used to watching shorter videos faster now. As entertainment that's always been based on having a mostly captive audience, the internet and social media have put movies in a tough spot. How can you expect a kid that's growing up with the internet now to sit through something as slow as 2001? a space odyssey. The insane amount of fast content online and the boom in streaming has created so much competition for people's attention that movies are at a crossroads. In the past, people mostly watched movies in a theater, on a huge screen. Even when home video became a thing, it wasn't like you could watch a new movie right away in your house. If a movie was popular, you'd have to wait months to see it on VCR or DVD. What that means is that for almost the entire history of movies, they've only ever had to sell you on the movie once. By the time you were in the theater and in your seat, they didn't have to worry about competing for your attention and constantly re-engaging you. They assumed you were more or less focused for the rest of the time, but it's becoming more and more popular to watch new movies just in your house, which means movies are now competing with texts, work emails, FaceTimes, cooking, cleaning, your cat, and everything else at home. And even if you're in a theater, movies are still competing with the entire world of content available to people on their phones at all times. The result is that a lot of filmmakers have basically changed how they make movies. For example, because the audience used to be so captive, movies could genuinely take their time at the start of their story, and a lot of the time they could hold off really even starting it at all and just develop characters in the world. Now, unless you have a really well-known story, like The Avengers or Dune, or are already a famous director, it's risky to make a movie that actually starts slow, because the person watching can just lose focus and do a million other things in their house. For the same reason, most successful movies now have have tons of action stuffed into them. I don't literally mean like car chases and shootouts, but in a lot of big movies, it seems like something significant in the story happens almost constantly once you get further in. Look at the difference between The Avengers and Jaws as an example. Both movies have a lot going on, and a lot of scenes that matter to the story, and both were huge blockbusters when they came out, but Jaws is able to ebb and flow. Something big will happen, like the shark attacking someone, obviously, and then there'll be like 20 minutes of the characters talking about how it made them feel or dealing with something else completely, or just telling stories on a boat. In the Avengers movies, once the story gets going, it seems like mostly big, significant plot points from there, and that's what could hold the audience's attention despite everything else trying to get it. Not all successful old and new movies work this way, of course, but it seemed a lot more common to have that variety back then. The internet hasn't just changed movies because we don't watch them in theaters as much, though. The internet is the best way to reach the most people with advertising, and social media is the most effective word of mouth advertising advertising that's ever existed. If everyone's talking about a show or movie on social media, and every joke is referencing it, all the people who haven't seen the show are incentivized to watch it, so they can be a part of everything online too. The people who make movies obviously know this, so they try to find the formula for what kind of movies get big online. One of the things they've tried that's worked really well is using famous IP, which basically means they use characters or worlds that are already super well known to make the movie more appealing and viral, aka what the Avengers does when they put so many famous characters in one movie. There's nothing new about using IP, but it's gotten completely out of control in the last 10 years. Out of the top 30 highest grossing movies of the 2010s, how many would you guess are based on famous IP? Half? Maybe 20? Maybe slightly more? Well, guess what? In the last decade, 29 of the 30 highest grossing movies were based on famous IP. That's not even close to normal if you look at the history of movies throughout the decades. This could be because of a variety of things, but I'd argue that more than anything, it's because these movies spread better online. For example, The Avengers had massive appeal in 2012 because of all the famous superheroes in one movie. It brought together so many pre-existing franchises. Then, as more and more Avengers movies and spin-off shows and theme parks and everything about the cinematic universe came out, a giant community formed online that is crazy loyal to the franchise. And it got so big that if you didn't watch those movies in the last 10 years, you were just way out of the loop on social media all the time, which got even more people to watch it and join that online community. And I think that kind of process is what happened with most or all giant franchises that dominated in the 2010s. Movie studios realized this and just started throwing together as much famous IP as they could to make
make blockbusters. We got Wreck-It Ralph, Ready Player One, Free Guy, Pixels, the DC Cinematic Universe, The Hunger Games, The Lego Movies, The Assassin's Creed Movies, The Emoji Movie, The Angry Birds Movie, and just thousands more. They're even making a movie about the Nintendo characters now. Just the Nintendo characters, but a movie. It's definitely become the strongest trend in Hollywood in the last 10 years. So we're left in a place where most of the super relevant, high grossing movies in the film industry are fast paced, don't dedicate much time to developing characters outside the plot, and are usually based on famous IP that already exists. Like I said before, I love movies, and so I've seen tons of movies in the past decade that were amazing. A lot of my favorite movies are from the 2010s, but it seems pretty undeniable that the internet has changed the way filmmakers go about making a movie that has a big budget and famous actors. If you're not already a well-known director, you gotta get those famous characters in there, and you gotta make the movie quick. It's complicated because the internet is such a good place for people who prefer original stories or weirder movies, because it's so much easier to find other people with the same taste and find movies to watch from them. But weirdly, it seems like social media and the mass of content online have made the biggest, most relevant movies less experimental and more similar to each other. I'm not even sure that's a bad thing, but because I'm not super into the Avengers or Star Wars, and I like slower movies as much as fast movies, it means that I personally have to look at smaller budget movies with actors that I haven't really heard of. It's not exactly a bad thing, but it does kind of suck that most of what dominates movie discussion online is basically four or five franchises I'm not super into that mostly make fast-paced, plot-heavy movies. We'll have to see how everything turns out. Maybe we'll cycle back to more original movies in the mainstream, or maybe I'll just have to accept that I'll have to do a little digging to find all the people excited about the movies I like. Only time will tell. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading at least once a week, so stay tuned for much more. I'll see you soon.